what is up you guys so i am now calling it a night i just came in from watching television in the living room it is after nine o'clock p.m i normally don't fall asleep till like close to 12 a.m so i'm good right now and usually i try to do every night i like to do my devotionals so this is the pocket bible devotional for women and i also do this my bible study journal um peace for my anxious heart guys one thing that i do struggle with is anxiety and i know that god is helping me with it and we just get through it little by little there's no shame no embarrassment whatever you sh whatever you struggle with you know just be open honest transparent with your heavenly father and he's gonna help you through it and you know i love to write come on now this is from my stationary line you guys have to check these out and you know the holidays are coming up so a lot of my things are going to be on sale i feel like i'm looking this way when i should be looking this way but yes this pen is beautiful like y'all gotta revamp you all stationary line with supplied by ally let Allie hook you up, okay? But nevertheless, the reason why I wanted to do this video tonight, right before I, you know, call it a night, was because something was placed on my heart. I was watching TV this evening, and while I was watching TV, all I kept hearing God say was, believe again, hope again. And I remember I wrote an Instagram post a few days ago, and it stated, like, don't, what did it state? Don't underestimate what God can do in your season of waiting. Take the limits off. Hope again. Believe again. Dream again. When God finally opens up the door, you're going to understand why the wait was so necessary and the purpose of it. It was something like along those lines. I'm very close, like 99.9% .9 close. So you can check that out on my Instagram, um, Single Chronicle 7. It is it was a recent post. It was sometime the day I'm filming this video, it was sometime within that week. But check it out. If you can't find it, check it out on my Pinterest. I normally put um my post in groups. So it's either under encouragement or singleness, but you'll find it. But nevertheless, um that when God gave those words to me a few days ago when I wrote that Instagram post and he's now putting it within my spirit again tonight while I'm watching television, I know that I need that for myself. And because I need that for myself, I know that somebody somewhere, whether it's you watching it or someone that you know, someone that we don't even know, they need to know that they have to dream again. God knows your circumstances. He knows the situation that has happened in your past, but you got to get back up and you got to go after what it is that you desire and what it is that you gave to God. And I remember, and you guys know with, you know, my love story, I'm giving God the pen. I'm allowing him to write it for me. I I am not taking control of it. I'm not even in the backseat. I'm all the way in the trunk. I'm allowing God to be the driver of my love story. And I've shared this on my Instagram. I shared this with a blog post. Back in May 2015, when I was 20 years old and I was reading a book, God spoke to me so clearly, stating that dating and being in multiple relationships would not be for me. Now, for somebody else, hearing that, they're probably like, what? Like, you kind of have to date around in order to find the one. But you see, God didn't give it to them. He gave that word to me. Dating and being in multiple relationships will not be for me. I need to keep my focus on him. And at the right time, he will reveal the person to me. And when that person who's supposed to be my husband sees me, he's going to know that I am his wife. So I just have to rest in God and wait on him. And that's the word that God gave me at 20 years old. I think it was, I know it was in May. I believe it was the 28th. I wrote it down. Um, 2015. And then at 23 years old, in June of 2018, I remember going to my friend's store 
she's a manager at a thrift store and going to her store i remember um when i went there that day i was with my older sister and we we just wanted to go to the store and see what's there you know she was having a sale and i saw some wedding dresses in her store on the mannequin but this one wedding dress caught my eye it was beautiful it was strapless it was like a corset from like the like up here down to like the waist and then it was like poofy at the end it was a beautiful dress and I was like wow like that dress is beautiful I'm gonna try it on but I was saying it jokingly but my friend when she saw my sister and I she's like Allie try it on see if it fits and even before I tried it on I said to God I was like God if marriage is for me if you want me to get married let this dress fit like a glove where there is no alterations, no take in, take out. Everything is just perfect. It just melts to my body perfectly. And I tried on the dress. Guys, the dress was perfect. Now, you see, with my prom dress, I needed a little tiny alteration that my mom did. But the sweating dress, no alterations at all, at all. And I didn't want to take it because I was like, ah, like a wedding dress, Addie, like you don't even have a man. Like, what are you doing? But in me and my even my friend encouraged me. She said, Allie, you should buy the wedding dress. You got to believe. You got to hope. If marriage is a desire of yours and you have brought it before God, God is going to open up the doorway for you. So if you want that dress, you got to get it. Mind you, it was a uh, Friday I bought the dress. My friend said the dress came in Thursday. And the person who dropped off the dress, she stated that she um it was her daughter who was supposed to that was the daughter bought the dress for her wedding, but the daughter ended up not wearing it. And she didn't want to return it, so she just dropped it off. You know, she just donated it to the store so that when I tried it on, no one else wore it. And my friend was like, you know, buy the dress. It's on sale right now. I'll give you the discount. I bought a wedding dress for $200. So I picked up the dress, and when I got home, I, was, I told my dad, hey, can you take me to the dry cleaners? So that, you know, I can dry clean the dress and put it, it have them put it in a box. So it's like, pre it preserves it. And my dad, like, he was like, um, he was like so confused as to why I have a wedding dress, but no man. But he was like, okay, Allie, if that's what you want, I'll take you. So he took me to the dry cleaners and we gave it to them and then the next day we picked it up and my dad had like all sorts of questions and i was like i was like dad it just it just flow with me flow with me in the spirit i bought this dress ask no questions ask no questions even my mom she had no questions i was like mom i'm just doing this in an act of faith i i, I know i don't have a man I never had a man, but y'all just, just rock with me right now. Let the spirit flow over you as I do something, like an act of faith. And guys, still to this day, I have that wedding dress in a box sitting in the basement on the shelf in my parents' home. And while I was watching TV tonight, God reminded me of that wedding dress. I completely forgot it. I remember when I moved from my parents' house, you know, to start in my career, was it three, four years ago, four years ago in 2019, I, you know, you're cleaning out, throwing things out, seeing what you don't need. And I wanted to throw away the dress because at that point I was like, God, like I would, I bought the dress at 23 
it was, I believe. And I was now 24. And I was just like, God, like I bought this dress standing firm on the promise that I'm going to get married. The dress fit like a glove and there is still nobody in sight. 24, I was saying that. 25, again, I was saying that even when the pandemic happened and I stayed in my parents' home while I was working, you know, because we were able to work from home. And I was still like, God, I just want to throw away the dress. Like, what's the purpose of keeping it if I don't see marriage in my future? But the dress is still there. It's still in the basement in my parents' home. Nice. And my dad had put it in a garbage bag, like a big white clear garbage bag. So, you know, like no dust would get anywhere near the box just for extra um, to preserve it more and it's still sitting there and you guys know how i do the vision board you know i do it like once a year i like to it's in my closet right now so not many times i will go in my closet and just sit on the floor and look at the vision board or like stand over the desk in my closet and just like just look over the vision board i do it every single year i put it in categories and just some of the things that i'm believing for for the year to come and one of the things God told me, normally I do it every December 5th of every year, but even just while watching TV, God is like, don't wait until December 5th. Start working on that vision board. You don't have to wait until a specific time. If you feel it in your heart, if you feel that unction, go forward in it. And when I was at church on Sunday, I've been going to my friend's church and the woman of the church, she she said that the Lord spoke to her and it was like a prophecy as to what's to come. And she said, good is going to happen, especially for those who are righteous, those who are walking in obedience. Your year is going to be fruitful. It's going to multiply. It's just going to be a year of blessings. It's going to be amazing. And she said, well, doesn't God tell us that every year? And he does. But this next year is going to be so much more greater than the year that we're, we're experiencing now. But she said, God told her, don't wait until January of 2023. It starts now. It starts today. The new year starts right now. So that's why with the vision board, I'm going to start working on it. And I'm not even going to speak it for next year. I'm going to start right now and say, God, I'm believing for marriage. At 27 years old, about to be 28 on February 8th, shout out to the Aquariuses. I really don't care about zodiac signs and all that stuff, but I just have to say that. Yeah. yeah. But the, the point I'm making is dream again, hope again, believe again. Even though you don't see it right now, even though... It, your season may seem so barren and so dead, continue sowing into it, continue doing what it is that is that God has placed on your heart so that you can continue holding on to it. Whatever your faith says, stand on that. Me buying a wedding dress with no man in sight, taking it to the dry cleaners, me writing on my vision board every single year that I do desire to be in a relationship. And I'm not going to lie, guys, like I have lost faith over the years when it comes to relationships because it just hasn't happened for me at all. And, you know, it created a lot of insecurities, wondering why it's not, you know, it just, I lost hope. I lost tremendous hope, but this year, especially as the year is coming to a close and God just reminding me of these little things, these little acts of faith, it's renewing my hope, saying that, you know what, Ali, marriage is for me. No, I have never experienced a relationship, a romantic relationship, but I know that I will have a successful, holistic, whole marriage that is full of healing that has God at the center because I know how to do relationships why because I look at my relationships with my friends with my family even at work with my co-workers even when it comes to business I I look within 
And I know that I'm not perfect and I can outwardly and openly admit that, but I know that I have such amazing qualities and there are such amazing things that I love about myself. And I've learned that in my singleness. So I know what I bring to the table. So I am so okay if I have to eat alone, no matter where I go, I'm comfortable eating alone because I know the value that's inside of me. That was not something that I recognized overnight. It took years of healing, years of me going after God, asking God to help me find myself in my singleness. Allow me to see myself the way that you see me. I can't go into a relationship not knowing who I am because then I'm going to fall for everything. But if I can go into a relationship knowing exactly who I am and what you say for me, over me, and to me, I know that I'm going to stand firm on your promises. I pray that this little just little tidbit I would say a little tidbit I pray that you know it just encourages you to hold on like your acts of faith it may look so crazy to man it may look silly it may look outrageous but because God is looking at you and he sees the faithfulness of your heart and he sees the intentions and he sees that, you know what, you're continuing to walk in the path that he has for you, even though it does not make sense. That's what he's going to honor. What does God do when he gives you a promise? You hold on. Even if people laugh at you, even if people question you, even if people scrutinize you, even if people push you to the side, you continue to hold on to that promise. God didn't give it to them. Them. He gave it to you. He spoke it to you and over your life. They're not going to understand what God has given you. Praise be to God if they do, but praise be to God if they don't. And no, you don't have to explain yourself to somebody else that is committed to not understanding you, that is committed to misunderstanding you. Don't allow their confusion to become your confusion. If God gave it to you, you hold on. And that is what I'm doing. I'm holding on. I know that marriage is for me. Even though I don't see it now, I know that I am meant to be a wife. I know that I am meant to be a mother. It may not feel like it right now, but I'm going to continue holding on. I may not see it, but I'm going to continue walking in my purpose. I'm going to continue walking in my calling. And when that time is right, when that season is right, God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out his blessings that there is not enough room for it to be contained. And I'm speaking that over you and I'm speaking that over your life that that you receive what it is that God has for you. Don't give up and don't give in because of what you have yet to see. Don't give the enemy that kind of power. Keep pressing to what it is that God has called for you and over your life. And another thing that I have done was created an album on my phone. It's called Wedding. And I remember when I was trying on the wedding dress, I had taken pictures of me in the wedding dress. So I look at the wedding dress sometimes with me in it. And I've also put um, like other decor and color schemes that I want for my wedding. So I'm going to continue doing little things for me when it comes to my wedding. My faith is renewed. There are moments when I do get like discouraged, you know, seeing if if marriage is for me. But I'm going to continue going, you know, and, you know, I'll be 28 next year. And, you know, if it doesn't happen for me, that's just God's way of protecting me, saving me. It's because God wants to continue bringing opportunities to me that can only be done in singleness. And I'm going to keep my head up high. I'm not holding on too tightly to marriage. I'm holding on tightly to God and however he sees fit for my life for 28 that's what it's going to be. But I'll write it on my vision board for next year. I would love to be in a godly relationship, a courtship heading towards marriage. But again, if it doesn't happen, um, it'll, I'll be a little discouraged, but it won't take me out like it used to in my early 20s where I, I will harbor over it for days, for months, thinking something was wrong with me. I know for a fact that if it does not happen next year, I know that be, I know it's because God sees something so much more for my future. And he just wants to bring forth so many things my way and open up doors for me that can really only be done in singleness. God saves specific things for singleness, just how he saves specific things for marriage. 
So I just want to encourage you today and just remind you that, you know, if it didn't happen for you, still hold on to it. Especially if you know, like, this head tie is, like, all in my eyes. But we, we, we're just going to roll with it. We're just going to roll with it. But anyways, if you know that marriage is for you and you know that God has called you to a season of season of marriage no we want a lifetime of marriage if you know that god has called you to marriage i want you to hold on to that even though you see it you don't see it even though you're young or you're old you hold on to that time is nothing to god age does not matter to god work on his timetable and not yours there's a reason for every single thing that God does. Yes, we may not understand and we may not comprehend, but I, yet we always have to remember that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But when we seek God first in his kingdom, all other things will be added unto us. God reminds us to not lean on our own understanding, but to trust him and acknowledge him in all of our ways and he will make our path straight. So you may not understand why you're single right now in this season, but that's okay. That's not a means to give up. That's not a means to walk away. That's not a means to try to do things in your own strength. That's just a means to trust God. God says if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed is so, so tiny. So tiny. But if you have faith as small as that, you can tell that mountain to move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So that is why I'm telling you, stand firm or what it is that God has given you. Believe again, hope again, dream again, take the limits off. He is a limitless God who wants to do nothing but the impossible in your life. I want you to stay encouraged, be encouraged. Until next time, be blessed. Peace out. It's time for bed for me.